This video provides an overview of the major concepts covered in Chapter 1, The Role of Financial Markets and Institutions. This chapter provides some background on financial markets and on financial institutions that participate in them. Chapter 1 is comprised of five key learning objectives. One, to describe the types of financial markets that facilitate the flow of funds. Two, to describe the types of securities traded within financial markets. Three, to describe the role of financial institutions within financial markets. Four, to explain how financial institutions are exposed to systemic risk. And five, to describe the role of fintech in financial markets. Let's begin with the role of financial markets. Financial markets transfer funds from those parties who have excess funds to those parties who need funds. The first key role of financial markets then is to accommodate corporate finance activity which involves such decisions as how much funding to obtain and which types of securities to issue when financing operations. The financial markets then serve as the mechanism whereby corporations, also known as deficit units, can obtain funds from investors. The second key role of financial markets is accommodating investors, also known as surplus units, who want to invest in either debt or equity securities. Investment management involves decisions by investors regarding how to invest their funds. Financial institutions serve as intermediaries within the financial markets by channeling funds from investors to corporations that need financing. This diagram illustrates how investors' surplus money flows through the financial markets and institutions to the corporations which use those funds to finance operations and expansion. In exchange for those invested funds, the investors receive securities such as bonds or stocks. The primary markets facilitate the issuance of new securities allowing corporations to obtain new funds and offer a means by which investors can invest funds. Secondary markets facilitate the trading of existing securities, allowing investors to change their investments by selling securities that they own and buying other securities. Now let's move on to securities traded in financial markets, where we'll briefly discuss money market securities, capital market securities, derivatives, the valuation of securities, securities regulations on financial disclosures, and international financial markets. Money markets facilitate the sale of short-term debt securities by deficit units to surplus units. The securities traded in this market are referred to as money market securities. Common types of money market securities include treasury bills, commercial paper, and negotiable certificates of deposit. Capital markets facilitate the sale of long-term securities by deficit units to surplus units. The securities traded in this market are referred to as capital market securities and commonly include bonds, mortgages, mortgage-backed securities, and stocks. Like money market and capital market securities, derivative securities are also traded in financial markets. Derivative securities are financial contracts whose values are derived from the values of underlying assets, such as debt securities or equity securities. Many derivative securities enable investors to engage in speculation and risk management. Each type of security generates a unique stream of expected cash flows to investors, and their value is often measured as the present value of those expected cash flows, discounted at a rate that reflects the uncertainty surrounding the cash flows. Now, investors can attempt to estimate the future cash flows they will receive by obtaining information that may influence the security's future cash flows using the process described in this diagram, where investors will gather information on economic conditions, industry conditions, and the firm itself in order to assess the firm's expected cash flows, which are then used to value the security to help the investor decide on whether or not to take a position in the security. The valuation of securities then are impacted by the information available regarding the economy, industry, and firm. In addition, valuation can also be impacted by behavioral finance, which is the application of psychology to financial decision-making and often results in mispricing of securities. Finally, uncertainty also surrounds the valuation of securities, as increased uncertainty increases risk. Many regulations exist that attempt to ensure that businesses disclose accurate financial information so that investors participating in financial markets can more properly value stocks and debt securities issued by firms. The most noteworthy regulations include the Securities Act of 1933, the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, 
and the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. Financial markets are continuously being developed throughout the world to improve the transfer of securities between surplus and deficit units. In addition, international financial markets have become highly integrated, which means that favorable or unfavorable market conditions in one market, such as the EU, can spill over into another, such as the US, and therefore affect the value of US stocks. The role of foreign exchange markets is also an important consideration in international financial markets which facilitate the exchange of currencies of different countries. Now let's move on to the role of financial institutions, starting with the role of depository institutions, which accept deposits from surplus units and provide credit to deficit units through loans and purchases of securities. Depository institutions include commercial banks, savings institutions, and credit unions. Next are non-depository institutions, which generate funds from sources other than deposits, but also play a major role in financial intermediation. Non-depository institutions include finance companies, mutual funds, securities firms, insurance companies, and pension funds. The role of financial institutions in facilitating the flow of funds from individual surplus units or investors to deficit units or borrowers is illustrated in this diagram, where we can see that surplus units make deposits into depository institutions, purchase securities and finance companies, and purchase shares in mutual funds, all of which make their way to deficit units, such as companies, government agencies, and some individuals. In addition, insurance policyholders pay insurance premiums, and employees make contributions to pension funds, and those insurance companies and pension funds also end up funding deficit units. In addition to filling the roles just described, financial institutions serve as monitors of publicly traded firms. As it turns out, financial institutions are of vital importance to the economy. Financial institutions hold assets equal to approximately $135 trillion. Finally, in recent years, some financial institutions have merged in an effort to achieve economies of scale. By increasing the volume of services produced within a given infrastructure, the average cost of providing the services, such as loans, can be reduced. This diagram depicts the typical organization structure of a finance conglomerate which seeks to diversify both risk and revenue streams across different sectors including commercial banking, thrift, consumer finance, mutual funds, securities, and insurance operations. The next key concept in the chapter relates to systemic risk among financial institutions. Systemic risk is defined as the spread of financial problems among financial institutions and across financial markets that could cause a collapse in the financial system and cannot be eliminated through portfolio diversification. The best contemporary example of systemic risk is a credit crisis of 2008-2009 where many financial institutions that originated mortgages shortly before the crisis sold them to other financial institutions in the form of mortgage-backed securities. Those other institutions received lower payments as mortgage defaults occurred or relied heavily on short-term debt to finance their operations and use their holdings of mortgage-backed securities as collateral, the value of which plummeted as more and more homeowners defaulted on their mortgages. The last key concept to consider in this chapter is the emergence of financial technology or fintech. Fintech refers to innovative products and services offered in the financial sector to improve or replace the traditional methods of doing financial intermediation and provide financial services. Examples of fintech firms and products include Venmo, PayPal, Apple Pay, and even cryptocurrencies. Fintech innovations are used in the banking sector, investment management field, finance, in regulatory compliance areas, and many others. The fast growth of fintech is attributed to accessible, innovative, efficient, and low-cost alternative it provides compared to traditional products and services offered by financial institutions.